the deeper I've gone into the Course, my life has, has really slowly started to simplify. But it's not been a simplification based on like um, the ascetic paths. The old way was uh, sacrifice, you know. If any of you have studied the, the, some of the old mystical paths or asceticism was where, where people would literally do harm to their bodies um, in, to sacrifice, or I guess in, in Catholicism, you know, doing all these different things, penance yes. and Hail Marys and, and different things, and it's like paying for sins that, that even take place with, with projected out onto the body. And I think there was a group that really helps, this example helps bring it clear to me, there was a group that came right after Jesus, right around the first century, um, after Jesus called the Gnostics. Some of you have probably heard of Gnosticism, where, you know, the Gnostics were right around the time of Jesus, and they, a lot of the Gnostics got part of his teaching. My kingdom is not of this world, you know, the kingdom of God is within you. And the Gnostics really got the fact that the world wasn't real, you know, that, that Jesus was speaking of a spiritual kingdom, that it wasn't an earthly kingdom, that the apostles and the Jewish mindset was looking for. But, the, the belief in sacrifice and the ego is so deeply rooted in the mind that they kind of fell into the ego traps that would maybe be called making the error real, where they thought, if the world's not real, then the world must be bad. So the body is part of the world. The body must be bad. And therefore, I'll starve the body, or I'll um, go out in the desert and I'll, I'll do things to harm my body to prove to myself and to God that the world isn't real. And unfortunately, the ego loves that. That's like playing into its hands because whenever you judge something as negative or bad in the world, you make it real. That, that literally, remember, we get back to our thing about projecting the duality and, and, and judging things good and bad and so forth. That once you judge something as negative in the world, then you reinforce it in your mind as being real. Then there was another sect of the of the Gnostics, who I you know, it's real interesting how they they kind of went off on the world's not real, so we can indulge in all of the vices and pleasures of the world, and they taught that if you didn't get them done in one lifetime, you would reincarnate and come back, and you could just keep indulging in the vices of the world until you were free of them. But as the Course teaches us, that doesn't work either, because the vices or or pleasure and pain basically both make the body real. I mean, in the sense that any of you have had a splitting headache and you're trying to do your lesson, you know, you know, I can see peace in this or, you know, there's nothing to fear or something when you've got a splitting headache. It's, you know, they just don't go together. The pain reinforces, pain is like a witness that says, I am hurting here. I am guilty or I'm fearful or I'm frail or something. And pleasure does the same thing, because pleasure focuses the mind or identifies the mind in the body. I mean, the sensations of the world, the Hindus and all the great mystics of the world have kind of got to this thing of pleasure and pain. That, that uh, Khalil Gibran, you might have read The Prophet, I mean, they're just, it's come through in so many different ways that they're really they're like two sides of a coin. The ego doesn't tell us that. The ego says, maximize pleasure and minimize pain, <laughs> avoid pain. Isn't that pretty common wisdom in, in, the, in the world? The mind that's in a, in a deceived state actually believes it can tell the difference. Doesn't it seem like that? Does pain and pleasure seem the same to you? You know, in, in a deceived state, they seem to be very, very different. But what the Course is teaching us is they're just, they're two sides of the coin, and there's all these passages, those who um, seek for pleasure cannot avoid pain as well that it's this, it's like this connection. The Course calls it the attraction to guilt. That, that as you keep, you know, people with addictions have tried, whether it's alcohol or marijuana or sexual addictions or food or, you know, these physical things that, that seem to be attractive, that seem to be like this little band-aid over this terrible loneliness and, and emptiness that's, that's felt inside. It's like this is a little quick fix, you know, that food. I can have that hot fudge sundae that I love, and it brings me a lot of pleasure, and it takes my mind off of the loneliness and the emptiness and the despair that I feel for about 10 minutes. <laughs> and then it's like, 
okay, another couple hours, you know, what, what's next? Do I, you know, what am I looking for? Do I, you can use movies, you know, wanting to just sit in your house all day and <laughs> watch movies, you know. I don't want to face the world. I want to just be distracted. It's the same kind of dynamic. And the Course is so great because it's finally starting to unveil the ego and all of its schemes. It's saying, you know, you know, to the to the mind, to the deceived mind, it, it, it uh, whispers um, that the pleasure is is good, and to itself, it whispers it is death. You know, I mean, it's just the course is starting to unveil how how kind of crazy and insane this ego thought system is.